Hello, how are you doing? My name is Keith. Um, and today I'm so much uh, excited to teach about the topic of repentance. I'm sure many of you have uh, a very different understanding of the word repentance. And uh, many, many, many people think that repentance is literally quit sinning. You see, so many people, when you ask them, what does repentance mean? They say it means quit sinning. Is, does it really mean quit sinning? Is repentance quit sinning? Is, it, is that what the Bible tells us? Should you quit sinning and then now you have repented? Is there a way that you can say, now I have stopped sinning. I don't sin anymore. So I know I am saved. I have repented. Is that what the Bible says? Because so many people keep on thinking, because I stopped doing this, I stopped doing that. I think I'm saved. I think I repented. Is that what the Bible tells us? Can you really quit sinning? Can you really wake up one day and say, okay, today I am sinless. So now I know I have repented enough. Is there a way like that? I don't think something like that can uh, really, really mean repentance. Because repentance is not, if you say repentance is by quit sinning, then it means uh, you can go to God by your own righteousness. You can say, I have been so righteous enough that now I can go to heaven. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible does not say there is a way that you can be able to quit sinning unless Christ imputes his righteousness on you. Then there is no way. You see, when you're saved, when you're born again, you become a righteous person, not by your own righteousness, but by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The only way you can know I am saved is by the righteousness which Jesus has imputed into you. So this whole aspect of quit sinning, this is a lie. You cannot be able to, to say that I have repented by quitting sinning. And today I want to explain to you very, very well what repentance means. All right. What repentance actually means. Let me show you definitions. All right. So let's see the various definitions of uh, what repentance means. Repentance actually has three different definitions. And I write them here. So one is change. Change mind. You can say I've changed my mind. And or change direction. All right. Change of direction. Or you can say feel sorry for something. Feel uh, feel sorry. Uh, feel sorry uh -huh, for something. Now, this is the definition of repentance. And I want to give you a very good explanation and show you in details why repentance means changing of your mind, changing direction, feeling sorry for something. It doesn't mean quit sinning. If quit sinning is all about repentance, then it is a gospel of works. You have to do something. But the gospel of grace does not say you stop sinning. The Holy Spirit will lead you. Once you become a believer, the Holy Spirit will lead you towards doing what is right, doing what is right, doing what is right. He does not tell you now uh, stop singing and si sinning and then now come and be saved. No, 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 no. We are told that we will live by the Spirit, not by the flesh. The Spirit will be inside us guiding us on what is right and what is wrong and to avoid what you are not supposed to do. So quit sinning is a gospel of works, all right? And uh, one thing I like you to know is that heaven, only two kinds of people will be able to enter heaven. Righteous people like who? Jesus is righteous. If you have never sinned ever since you were born, from birth till whatever, if you have never sinned, then you're the only person who can get to heaven. But the Bible tells us that we are all sinners. We have sinned from Adam. We have sinned. We have our thoughts. Every day we think over 10,000 times. Tell me how many of those 10,000 thoughts are righteous? None. We have very few which are righteous. So if we are fully sinners like that, the only other second person who can enter in heaven is forgiven person, a forgiven sinner. So if you are a forgiven sinner, then you don't go to heaven with your own righteousness. You go to heaven by the righteousness of Christ. 
All right. But then what does the word repentance mean? Because we have heard it so many times. Uh, the Bible is saying repent, 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 repent. Some people say repent and do something. You see, it's like it's like do something. It's like they, they, they want to say repent is one word for stop sinning and then have faith. It's like repent and have faith. Repent and get baptized. Repent. It, it, it's like people don't really understand the word repent. And today I want to dissect it very well. And uh, for me to be able to dissect the word repentance, I want to show you very clearly how in the Bible it is said so many times that God repented. God repented, I think, almost 32 to 34 different Bible verses in the Old Testament. Talk about God repenting. Was God a sinner? Did he sin? Was he quitting sinning? Was God a sinner? No, God has never been a sinner. So now when he says he is repenting, then what does he mean? He's either saying that he's changing his mind, changing direction from one end to another, or feeling sorry for something. And I like to show you in depth and explain to you very clearly and show you God repenting. That will be our beginning point so that you can be able to understand what exactly repentance means. In Genesis 6, from verse 6 to 7, the Bible says, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. It repented God that he created man. Verse 7, And the Lord said, I will not... I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beasts and creeping thing and the falls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. So God is feeling sorry for having created man. Man decided to be wicked, decided to be an evil, decided to do all the things that he wanted to do. And God felt sorry for having created him. What, did, did God quit sinning for creating man? No, that's not what the Bible says. Exodus 13, 17. Exodus 13, 17. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had left had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, for God said, less preadventure, pre the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Listen. God took Israelites the longer way so that they wouldn't change their direction. They would not change their direction. They would not repent, change their direction back to Egypt when they see war coming ahead. You see the word repentance being used there so that they could not change their direction. They are, they are going this way and then something happens and they say, hey, no, no, it's, it's really going to be hot here. I need to change my direction. All right. Exodus 32, 12. Wherefore, should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief he did bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth, turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. This is Moses telling God, repent from the evil that you want to do to Israel. All right? Don't do this evil. What was he saying? Moses was telling God, Change your mind. Change your mind from the things that you want to do to Israel. You want to destroy them in the wilderness? What will people say? They will say you took them from Egypt and then you killed all of them in the wilderness. You are not a powerful God if you could not maintain them all through. So Moses is telling God, repent God, repent. Change your mind. Change your mind. Change your mind. Verse 14 says, And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. God changed his mind. He repented of the evil that he wanted to do to the people. Now, did God stop sinning? Are you seeing the, the picture here? Numbers 23, 19. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent, Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and he shall not make it good? So now what is the Bible telling us here? God is not man that he should say something and change his mind. He says, I am righteous and I will be righteous. I will not change my mind from being righteous to an evil judge. I will not change my mind from being uh, what I, I declared holy to being unholy. 
Unless he wants to show grace. There are times when God will change his mind to show grace. Like the times that he wanted to destroy Israel or want to destroy a certain uh, type of people. And then he changes his mind because of grace. So are you understanding the word repentance and what it means? Deuteronomy 32, 36. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he sees that their power is gone and there is none shut up or, or left. All right? God is saying, the Bible is saying, God will judge his people, but he will feel sorry for his servants. He will repent himself for his servants. I know I'm judging you, but I still feel sorry. You're still my children. I know you're still my children. I, I want you to be good, but sometimes it's very difficult for you people. You want to do what is right, but sometimes it's, it's very difficult for you. So God is feeling sorry for them. Yes, I will judge you. It's like we are punishing your child. But then you still look at that child. You say, it's only because you're my child. I feel so bad beating you. It's only if you could know and do what is right. Judges 2.18 And when the Lord raised them up, uh, and when the Lord raised them up, judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. All right? So God felt sorry for these people because of their groanings. They always he felt sorry and he's wondering I've been so good to you why are you still groaning God repented he felt sorry I want you to understand the true meaning of the word repentance for those people who say it means stop sinning for those who want to condemn you and want to make you feel you see in Christ there is no condemnation you cannot say uh, I, I, I did something and then now God will not does not love me anymore no in the Old Testament, you had to do something. It was all about repent, then God repents. Then you repent, then God repents. It was always like that. You do good and then God does good to you. It was, always, it was a gospel of works. You had to make sure that there is something that you're doing. We will see it all through and we'll be able to understand. Judges 26 uh, 21 6 judges 21 6 it says and the children of israel repented them for benjamin their brother and said there is one tribe cut off from israel this day they are repenting for benjamin they felt sorry for losing benjamin were those people did they stop sinning for losing benjamin did they stop sinning for losing benjamin no they felt sorry for losing benjamin and uh, down there uh, Judges 20, 26, 15, it says, And the people repented them for Benjamin, because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. They felt sorry God had made a breach. Somebody had died now. One tribe was gone. They felt sorry. Okay? First Samuel 15, 10 to 11. First Samuel 15, 10 to 11. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he, for he is turned back from following me, and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. So God felt sorry for making Saul the king. He felt sorry. He said, I made Saul the king, and then, he did everything against me. So God is feeling sorry. He's not quitting sinning. All right. First Samuel 15, 29. And to show you as many verses as possible to prove to you that repentance does not mean quit sinning. It means something totally different. And you have to understand this is the gospel of grace. And many people don't like this gospel of grace. They always are, ah, you know, no, 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 we have to do something. It can't be that simple. It can't be that simple. Even Paul says, many people are, are, are refusing the, the, the simplicity of the gospel. It's like they want to make it, you know, it has to be a little bit hard. No. Check. Let's keep on checking. 1 Samuel 15, 29. 
1 Samuel 15, 29, it says, And also the strength of Israel, that's capital S, meaning God, the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. God will not change his mind. The strength of Israel, God, will not change his mind. He will not change his mind. All right? Verse 35 down there, it says, And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. God repented. He felt sorry. Also, let's see, 2 Samuel 24, 16, it says, And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Arun, Aranua and Jebusite. God changed his mind and showed grace. When the angel was destroying, destroying, told us, Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Don't do it. Don't do it. He showed grace. All right? He changed his mind. God changed his mind. He repented and said, no, no, no. Angel, stop, stop. Enough, enough, enough. All right? Jeremiah 15, 6. Thou hast forsaken me, said the Lord. Thou hast gone backward. Therefore, I will stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. God is saying, I am tired of repenting. I am tired and weary of feeling sorry for Israel. I'm going to destroy them. You, Israel, I'm weary of feeling sorry for you. I feel sorry for you, you do the same thing again. I feel sorry, you do the same thing again. And that's why now God, he felt tired, felt sorry. For always seeing Israel doing the same thing over and over, God has some limits, all right? He has some limits. And that's where now we see after that, what happened to Israel when he reached some point and he said, no, I'm tired of feeling sorry for you and you're not changing. The Israelites were taken by the Babylonians for, I think, almost 70 years, all right? So you can see it, there's a limit. You continue doing sin, you continue doing something and you're not changing, you're not feeling sorry for it, you're not changing your mind to doing what is right and God will leave you to a reprobate mind and he'll say, okay, you've decided to do that, you're a bad son, so now continue. The wages of sin is death, you will die, your flesh will die, but yes, your soul will be saved, but... God does not allow that. He says, continue doing what is wrong. Continue. Do you think that now you should do over and over wrong things so that grace may abound? No. Don't do that. Follow the spirit. Walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Because whatever you sow in the flesh, you will reap in the flesh. Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah 18, 8. It says, if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. Verse, uh, verse 10. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I will benefit them. So now God is saying, if you change your mind, I will change my mind. If you repent, I will repent. If you do good, I will, you know, I will do good to you. Change your mind. Change your mind from trusting and doing those evil things. Change your mind from where you're going. Change your direction. Once you do that, I'll also change my mind. And the evil that I was to give you, then I'll not give you those evil things. So the Old Testament is of works. We have seen very, very well the Old Testament talking about different things. God repented, God repented, God repented, God repented. All right? Let me write it there. God repented. We are seeing God repenting, God repenting, and all that. So now, the Old Testament, we see a lot of God repenting. And it dictated if Israel did good, God blessed them. If they did bad, God judged them. So if you did good, you do good, God blesses you. You do bad, God judges.
All right? So, when you do good, God blesses you. When you do bad, God judges you. So, that's that's literally, we are seeing it. Let, let's see a couple of more uh, verses. Eh? Amos, the book of Amos, 7.3, it says, The Lord repented for this. It shall not be, says the Lord. He felt sorry for Israel, gave them grace. All right? Jonah, the most, one of the famous uh, verses that you always read. Jonah, uh, story I mean. Jonah 3, 9 to 10. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did not. The people of Nineveh, they felt sorry for what they have done. They felt sorry. They changed their mind from what they were doing, which is evil. And what happened? God also changed his mind. He changed his mind from destroying them and say, no, I will not destroy you. I will now give you grace. Are you seeing the difference? Are you understanding the difference? So in the Old Testament, when man repented, God repented. Man repented, God repented. It was all about do good, be blessed. Do bad, God judges. It was always like that. Okay. Zechariah 8, uh, 14. Zechariah 8, 14 says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, As I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, says the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. All right? So God is saying, I have some limits. You can't just push me to the wall all the time. I have limits. Yes, I can always change my mind when when you, you, you show that you're also changing. But if you're not changing, then I will not change. All right? Are you understanding that? I will judge you. So when Jesus shows up, we see another time. When Jesus shows up, repentance was still by works. When Jesus shows up, repentance was still by works. But then, I think this one I've drawn a big, big one. Let me uh, make it a little bit smaller. So when Jesus came, repentance, yes, was still by works. Until literally Jesus died in the books. All right. This is the cross of Jesus Christ. I always like to draw it so that we can be able to understand. So when Jesus shows up, now repentance is still by works until literally Jesus dies. So in the gospel, that is uh, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we are, those books are still in the Old Testament. Why? Because Jesus has not literally died. Because uh, the book of Romans, uh, no, Hebrews, sorry. He says the death of, uh, a testament is affected by the death of the testator. So unless the testator dies, literally, then the testament has not started. So that one is something that you need to understand very, very clearly. All right. So in Matthew 3, from verse 1 to 2, we see something here about repentance. He's still talking about repentance of works. Repentance through works. Let me show you. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, you can ask yourself, what was John the Baptist saying? How was he saying that people need to repent? He has explained down there how you need to repent. He says, he says here very well that uh, bring therefore fruits meet for repentance. There's something that you need to do, all right? There's something that you need to do, all right? That is works. Uh, actually, I should not put it there because it will seem... As if I'm saying the crosses of works, all right? There's something that you need to do that is works. And this is all ties in the time of the law. The time of the law and all that, okay? So now there's something that you need to do. He's saying, bring therefore fruits meet for repentance. And then verse 11 says, I indeed baptize you with water. So you have to get inside water. There's something that you need to do. With water and to repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So now he's saying, 
Right now, you have to do some work. You have to bring, you have to bring some things worthy of repentance, some fruits. And then you have also have to, you also have to do what? To, to be baptized in water. You have to be baptized in water. And then some fruits for repentance. Okay. That is John. Okay. So you have to do something. Bring some fruits and then get inside water. You have to do something. This is before Jesus moved to the other side. Okay. He died. Let's also see something here. John the Baptist was preaching to the Jews. And he was preaching confirming the Messiah to the Jews. And that he was saying, hey, the Messiah is about to show up. The Messiah I've been waiting for is about to show up. So you need to do something for repentance. You need to clean up yourselves. All right? Get washed. Okay? Because the king is about to come. And also when you get washed here, then this one will show that you have repented. And also it will give you remission of sins. It will give you uh, forgiveness of sins. So that message was repentance by works. Let's see also something here. Mark 2.17. Mark 2.17. It says, when Jesus heard it, he said unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick, I came uh, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. So Jesus in his earthly ministry is telling, I came to call sinners unto repentance. So here Jesus is saying he needs the sinners to change their mind. To change their mind from believing in things and believing in him. So he's still talking about repentance. But then he's still here on the earth before he dies. So there's still works involved. Let's see. Jesus sending his disciples to preach repentance. See what he tells them. In Mark 6 verse 7, it says, And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. Verse 12, and they went out and preached that men should repent. So the apostles have been commissioned, go out, go and preach, and preach one thing, repentance. Repentance. Go tell people to repent, to change their mind, to change the direction, or to feel sorry for what they are doing. You see, I like to argue this so much because so many people think that repentance is quit sinning. Change this or maybe say a certain sinner's prayer and then you're saved. No. To repent, to go and change their mind from what they are believing to believing in Jesus Christ. All right? To change their direction from going towards hell to going towards heaven. It's, it's as simple as it could ever be. All right? So the disciples were preaching, change your direction towards the Messiah to be saved. Change your direction. You are moving like this. Start moving like this. The Messiah is coming. Move like this towards the Messiah. Are, are you seeing the difference? So Jesus preaches his message to the Jews only. We see this one. Message of uh, go, the gospel of works is all to the Jews. This one is all to the Jews. All right. The gospel of works. It's all to the Jews. You have to do something. You have to be baptized. You have to do this and that. You have to give some fruits. That is not the gospel of us today. No. This is a gospel of do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that. It's only for the Jews. And in Luke 13, 3, it says, I tell you nay, but except you, you repent, you shall all likewise perish. I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. That is in verse uh, 5 also, down there. Verse 6, uh, downwards. From verse 6 downwards, we see the parable of the fig, fig tree. Fig tree is who? The Israelites. So Jesus is talking to the Israelites. Israel, the Jews. Do this, do this, do that. And of course, we see the early apostles preaching repentance by works also. The early apostles, like I've told you. Let's see what they say. That is uh, the time of uh, now Jesus has just died. But the early apostles are preaching something here. Okay, we have uh, 
This is a cross. Then we have uh, the early apostles. All right. And then uh, this is the whole church age. And then we have the rapture. And then we have the tribulation. And then we have the millennial kingdom. All right. All right. All right. Uh, now, here we see the first part. The early apostles are preaching something. And what are they preaching? They are preaching still the gospel of repentance by works. Okay? Let's see what they are saying. In Acts 2.38, this is Peter. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So Peter is telling them, Repent and be baptized. So he's still talking about water. Repent and be baptized. So change your mind. And get inside water. Do some work. So that you can be forgiven of sins. Alright. Now is that what Paul preaches? Is that what Paul preaches in the church age? No. So Peter is really preaching to the Jews and not Gentiles. Let's see. In verse 36. What is Peter saying? And who is he addressing? Let's see. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly. He's saying to the Jews. He's telling the Jews. Hey, you Jews. So here Peter is preaching to the Jews. Peter is preaching to the Jews. Okay. The Jews, the early apostles and Peter, they are all preaching to the Jews. In Acts 3.19 it says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. He's still talking about repent, repent. Acts 5.31 him that God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior for to give repentance unto Israel and forgiveness of sins. Repentance unto who? The Jews. The Jews again. They're being mentioned. All right. The early apostles preaching repentance to the Jews specifically. This is what you are seeing. It's preaching repentance to the Jews. In Acts 8.22. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of the heart may be forgiven thee. Who is Peter talking to? The Jews as well, telling them to change their mind. Okay? But now we see something different here. From Acts chapter 9, from Acts chapter 9, okay, chapter 9, we see some guy called Paul. Uh, let me just let me just write here from Acts chapter 9 we see a guy called Paul who, who gets saved now Paul is he preaching the same way that you need to go and do some works is he talking about it's faith plus works is believing and trusting and changing your mind towards uh, God and do something do you have to do some work no let's see Let's see. So from Acts chapter 9, Paul gets saved. And from chapter 10 and chapter 11, we see the Gentiles starting to be saved. Gentiles are starting to be saved now. Gentiles. And, uh, and the doctrine of repentance by works changes to repentance by faith only. Now it was works, but now we see faith only coming in. So Paul now does not say repent because you killed your Messiah. You see here it was all about repent, you killed your Messiah. Peter and the early apostles are saying repent, you killed your Messiah. Alright? You killed your Messiah. You did something wrong. Repent and now believe after killing your Messiah. But now does Paul tell them to repent because they killed their Messiah? No, he does not say that. He tells them is repentance unto life. You now repent towards life. You change your direction towards your life. Okay? Towards life. Change your direction towards life. Repent towards life. Alright? Let's see. In Acts eleven eighteen, what does Paul say? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then has God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. So now Paul is preaching another thing. Paul is preaching to the Gentiles. Repentance unto life. That is exactly what Paul is preaching. But here it was repentance because they killed your Messiah. All 
Alright? Up to here is repent. Repent, you killed your Messiah. But here is repentance unto life. Are you seeing a difference? So now we are, we are turning from this gospel to a gospel of Paul, the gospel of grace. Okay? So Paul preaches in Athens. Athens was the center, the center of idol worship, the pagan worship. And uh, he was telling them to change their direction, to change their direction from uh, worshipping the f- pagan false gods to worshipping the true God. He's telling them, change your direction, repent, stop, stop worshipping these gods to worshipping the true God. Listen, in Acts 17.30, it says, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent repent change your direction stop trusting these idols that you're calling gods and start trusting in the true god paul is telling athenians turn to god turn athenians to god because those people used to worship idols like no man's business in acts 15 19 to 20 it says wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which are from among the gentiles are turned to god but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols, from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. So he's telling them, stop doing these things. These things that you're doing, stop trusting in them. The gods are telling you, strangle, you know, fornicate. You see, fornication was, was like worship to, 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 the, to those guys. It was a, it was a way of worshipping. It's strangling animals. It was a way of worshipping. So they stop trusting in those idol worships and all those kind of things that they are trusting and trust in the one true God who does not require all these things. When you change your mind from that to this, you change your direction from that to this, then you're saved. So Paul acknowledges repentance by works preached preach by John the Baptist, but now introduces repentance without works. He's, he talks about, yes, I know, John the Baptist was preaching the gospel of works. But now, there's another gospel, which is gospel without works. All right? Without works. Paul, I'll write here, without works. So Paul was preaching faith. Faith alone. This one, you have to take it very seriously. Preaching faith alone. Faith, faith, faith. Faith in Christ. Okay? And I want to show you something here. Uh, in Acts 19, 2 to 6, it says, He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? This is Paul asking them. And they said unto him, We have not so much as had where there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, What then were you baptized? And they said unto, uh, and they said, unto John's baptism. Okay, then said Paul, John verily baptized with baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So now he's saying, uh, John the Baptist was baptizing by water unto repentance. But now I have come with another different solution. Believe by faith. Okay? So now when they heard it, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So have you heard anywhere Paul mentioning water? No, there is nowhere he mentioned water. Now he's talking about repentance by faith alone. There is no water that he mentioned. He actually acknowledges and said, the time of John... He baptized with water unto repentance. But now, I am coming with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So you're seeing the difference? So Paul still insists that repentance towards God is by faith. So we see the whole difference of the way people used to repent in the Bible is not the same way. It's by faith. And we see this in Acts 20.21. It says, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. So changing direction towards God, all right? Changing direction towards God and faith, all right? It's uh, it's literally saying the same thing. So change your direction towards God. It's not quit sinning. 
is not quit sinning towards God. No, it's change your direction. So get salvation uh, not by doing good works, but by trusting in Jesus alone. So now he's talking about you need to trust Jesus. Change your mind. Change your direction. Stop trusting these things you have been trusting. Trust in the true God. All right? And to repentance of life. All right? You are going to hell. Now you will be going to heaven when you trust someone else. That is God. So after you're saved, you are now required to do good works. Now that's where people think that, you see, uh, people don't have, don't, don't separate the thin line between uh, good works and salvation. You cannot be saved by works. But is, it is very, very good to do good works after you're saved. Because the Bible tells us something here. Let's, let's see first, uh, Acts 26, 20. Listen here what, 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 what he's saying. Eh? But showed fast unto them of Damascus, but showed fast unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. This is Paul. When he was talking, uh, he, he was talking about, I think he was talking to King Agrippa, if I'm not wrong telling them different things of how uh, he was here and uh, is clarifying a number of things. Uh, is it there? Uh, yeah, he's clarifying a few things about repentance. So he's saying, after you repent, you need to do some good works. You need to, you know, uh, do good things to God because he did not just save you and just stay there and then now you're saved. I know I'm going to heaven. Let me just... No, go and prophesy to other people. Go and... Reveal different things to people. Go and preach the gospel. Go and do great things. Let live a testimony so that other people can also come to Christ. Because even in Ephesians 2, 8 to 10, it says, For by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So you are not saved by anything else. You are saved by faith. It is not of yourselves. Not of your works. It is the gift of God. All right? Not of works, lest any man should boast. Don't bo go boasting and say, yeah, I was baptized in River Jordan, so I think I'm more righteous than you. I think I did this. I think I gave my tithe. I think I did. No, it's not of works, lest you should boast. All right? But verse 10 tells us something. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So we are created unto good works. We should do some good works. We should do something right, good after we have been saved. But it's not these works which give us salvation. So Paul clarifies salvation is by faith, faith, faith alone. And we should walk in good works after we are saved. So repentance is all about changing the direction from darkness to the light. You are believing in darkness. You are walking in darkness. Now you change and you say, now, I'm no longer going to believe in darkness. I'm no longer going to do things of the dark. I am going to do things which are good. All right? In Acts 26, 17 to 18, Acts 26, 17 to 18, it says, Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness unto light, from the power of Satan unto God, all right, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them, which, is, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. You are sanctified by faith that is in Christ Jesus. You turn from darkness to light, from Satan unto God, from hell unto going to heaven. That is how you change. That is repentance. Repentance is turning totally, completely to something different. So Paul quotes Jesus. Uh, uh, so, so, so Paul, there is a place. I, th I think this is where I wanted to mean. Eh? In, in that verse, we are seeing that Paul is quoting uh, what Jesus says to King Agrippa when he was already uh, taken. Uh, and he's saying, he's telling to King Agrippa about his experience when he met Jesus on his way to Damascus. He's saying, Jesus told him that you need to turn from darkness 
to light. Turn from doing things for Satan to God. Turn from going to hell to heaven. So he's trying to quote this to the king and telling him, no, there's the whole thing of repentance. The whole thing of, and, and I think God sometimes can lead you through some situations because he wants you to testify. Look at Paul. When he's there, he's in prison here, he's in prison there, and then finally taken to Rome. He could have probably, if, if, if he all thought, you see, today's gospel, many people think about, you see, if, if, if I'm passing through tribulations and problems, it's because I'm not a believer, it's because uh, God is hating me because of something I did. No, no, it's not like that. There's no way in the Bible that we see God acknowledging gain for godliness. No. Look at Paul. He was imprisoned, beaten, done this. If it was today's time, people would say you are beaten and taken to jail because you are an evil person. No. It's because God wanted him to witness. He witnessed to different kings. He witnessed to different people. He witnessed here and there and there. Because God wanted it to be like that. And that through that witness, many people got to hear the gospel. He was taken to Rome. He witnessed there. He was taken here. He witnessed so many different places. Remember even he, he, he went through a shipwreck. And he was beaten by snakes. He, so many things happened. Because God wanted him to witness. That was the plan and procedure. So it does not mean when you're going through issues, uh, you, you, it's, it's like God is not happy with you. No, he wants you to witness and to do what is right, okay? Mm -hmm. Now let's check something here. Mm. So like we have seen, salvation is by faith and we repent by turning our faith from worshipping idols to worshipping God. And we can see one more verse here. In 1 Thessalonians 1, 9, it says, For they themselves show us, uh, for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. And how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. He's saying, you turn from trusting or serving these gods to trusting the living God. You see the difference? You see the difference? So unless you turn, you change your mind, you have not repented. Changing of mind. You see, today's churches, many people are there, they think that they repented. They think that they are saved. By something that they did. I stopped smoking. I stopped drinking. I stopped uh, cheating people. I stopped doing this. And I know now I have repented. No, you have not repented. You have not repented. All right. So what you have done is you have just believed in your things. Okay. So you need to do what is right. Which is changing from this side to changing to this side. Doing what is right according to God. Okay. So now... Let's see, the only way you can truly repent or turn towards God is by understanding the gospel. You need to understand the gospel. So you will have to realize that you're lost. Realize first that you're lost. You need to hear the gospel. You understand the gospel and then you believe. So those are several things that you need to put in mind. Realize that you're lost. Hear the gospel. Understand the gospel. And then... You believe. So what is the gospel? I always like to give this. The gospel. The gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. All right? For those maybe who have not heard the gospel, it's always very important to speak about the gospel. So the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And I'll read it quite fast. Uh-huh. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you are believed in vain. So he's saying, I present to you the gospel, which I preached unto you and which you have received and where you stand. You have to stand in the gospel. You have to hear the gospel. And you, you, are, you are saved by the gospel. And you have to keep the gospel in memory. 
Because this is your certificate, keeping it in your memory. Unless you're believed in vain. Believing in vain is believing in something that you do and saying, ah, you know, I did this. I think I'm saved because I did this. No, you can't be saved by doing something. For I delivered unto you, first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for uh, uh, for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It is how. How did Jesus die? He shed his blood. That is how he died. He shed his blood. Okay? So believing in this blood, the blood is your propitiation. God uh, settled his wrath from the, uh, at the blood of Jesus, with the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you believe this action was done for you, that Christ died, there are five points. Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again, according to the scriptures. Once you believe that, then you're saved. That's the full gospel. And that is how you repent. You repent by believing and by going from this trusting of these things to trusting in Jesus Christ, trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So I hope you've been able to understand the whole aspect and concept of repentance and it has come clear to you. So it means once we are saved, we start doing good things. It does not mean quit sinning and then you come. No, this work will be done by Christ himself, by the Holy Spirit inside you. He will change you, change you, change you as the days go by. You will start hating sin by the day. As you walk in the Spirit, you will no longer walk in the flesh. So thank you very much. I hope you have been able to understand something. I hope uh, you have heard it in a different way. You can share the video so that other people can also hear and understand and learn. God bless you and see you next time.